Hey there, ever set up a fancy N8N workflow on a remote server only to realize you can't interact with files or apps on your local machine? It's like building a bridge that stops right at the river's edge. You've got all this automation power, but you can't touch your Obsidian notes or run local scripts. Super frustrating, right? This is why I was running N8N on my local machine as well, so I could have the automations that worked in all the places I needed. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve this exact problem without needing two instances of N8N, which happens to be the sponsor of this video. Now, they don't actually see the script before I post these. I just really dig N8N and I got lucky on a sponsorship. So thanks again to N8N for sponsoring this video. Now I'm using a neat tool called Webhook. Yeah, not a great name. Reminds me when the company I worked for years ago renamed the product that I focused on from Teamplate, a searchable name, to Workflow, a less searchable name. Before we dive deeper, if you're getting value from these automation tutorials, hit like on this video, then click on that subscribe button and notification bell. I have so much more I wanna show you about working with N8N in interesting ways, often incorporating local AI like Olama. You don't wanna miss what's coming next. This version of the video is the public release. It's shorter and gets straight to the point compared to what I had originally planned for the video. That original version was released to my Patreon and YouTube members a few days ago. If you wanna see that longer video, which includes uh, extra examples, extra explanations, then consider becoming a member. It doesn't cost much and it really helps me do what I do. Webhook by Adnan Hajarevich is an open source project that creates a simple but specialized web server on your local machine. This server can listen for HTTP requests, optionally with authentication options and more, and then run local scripts or commands when it receives them. It works on Windows or Linux or Mac, which means pretty much everyone watching this video can use it. So to get started, you'll need to install Webhook. You can grab it from GitHub by cloning the repo and compiling it using Go. Alternatively, it's available through package managers like AppGet on Linux, or you can download pre-compiled binaries for our most platforms from the releases page, though Windows users have to compile it. I don't know why. I've included links to everything in the GitHub repo linked to in the description below. Once installed, you'll want to set it up as a service so it runs in the background. For Mac users, I've created a launch CTL file that you can use. It'll be in the GitHub repo for this video. For Windows and Linux, you'll need to figure out the right way to set up a service or background job for your OS. But for now, you can just run it on the command line. But first, you need to create a file. That file is a hooks.json file. This is where you define what happens when your webhook receives a request. Let me show you the one I created. In my configuration, I've set up a webhook called create obsidian file. When this endpoint receives a post request, it runs a shell script and passes along four parameters from the JSON body, file name, think, research, and citations. The shell script itself is pretty straightforward. It takes those arguments, checks if a file with that name already exists, adds a numbered suffix if needed, and then writes the content to a markdown file in my Obsidian vault. Now let's look at how we set up the N8N workflow. Remember, because we're using TailScale from the previous video, our N8N server can already communicate with our local machine without any complicated port forwarding or VPN setup. If you haven't watched that video, you can find it here. It's a little more involved than simply installing TailScale because it's running in Docker Compose, but I have a neat trick that I use to deal with secrets that you might not have seen before. So check that out, then come back to this video. In N8N, I've created a workflow that starts with a webhook trigger. When I send a request to this webhook with an idea parameter, it kicks off the process. I created a simple workflow in shortcuts on my iPhone that takes in text and sends that off to the webhook. 
The workflow in N8N then calls Perplexity's research API, passing along my idea as something to research. To use that API, you basically just send a JSON blob that looks like this. Perplexity churns on this for upwards of a couple of minutes, so you need to specify a good long timeout. When Perplexity returns results, I use a bit of regex in a code node to separate the thinking section from the actual research and citations. Finally, I package everything up into a JSON object and send it to my local webhook endpoint. Let me demonstrate this end to end. I'll trigger the workflow with an idea, and you'll see how N8N processes it, calls perplexity, then sends the results to my local machine where it automatically creates a new note in my Obsidian fault. So let's open the shortcut on my phone and enter an idea. I have dozens of ideas on post-it notes on my wall in my office. So I'm just adding that idea to this shortcut. The first step in any video after creating a thumbnail idea and possible title is to do a little bit of research. That then turns into a script that I'd use to talk to the camera. So if I open up N8N and go to the executions, I see that the workflow is still processing the perplexity API. When it's done, the rest moves super quick. And I have this new note in my Obsidian vault. Pretty cool, right? With just a few components, we've created a system where my remote N8N server can interact directly with the applications on my local machine. Now, a quick note about costs. Using Perplexity's API is not free. From my testing, each request seems to cost between 15 and 50 cents. If I did the research manually in the Perplexity UI, it would be free. Sure, Perplexity Pro is somewhere around $200 a year, but I managed to get a free year through Kevin Rose's newsletter. Doing the actual research manually would take a lot more time and time is money. 50 cents isn't crazy expensive, but not something I would want to do hundreds of times a day. In an upcoming video, I might explore using Perplexica as an alternative, which could potentially be a lot more cost effective. Now, all of this is running on my KVM2 server that I've hosted on Hostinger, which costs about six bucks a month if you use my coupon code, which is MattW. Let me show you another example. Every Tuesday, I do a stream with a friend who I used to work with when I was at Datadog. On that stream, we talk about everything the two of us are interested in. That includes the latest AI news, TV and movies that we've seen, any purchases we've been suckered into making, and we love to cover a good tech survey. Even though I know when it's going to be, it's a scramble every time to get ready for it. So now I have a workflow in N8N that's triggered every Friday that starts by getting the relevant news items for the week and emails it to me and to Ryan. And then it sends another email to me and to Ryan asking for a list of topics to cover. Without waiting for a response, my local webhook is called and I use the automation features in Pixelmator to update the thumbnail with the date of the stream. That gets saved and sent back to the workflow. At that time, the new stream is scheduled. Whenever either one of us reply to the topic email, and we can do that several times up until 10 minutes before the stream, the topic list is regenerated and the stream listing is updated. On Monday and Tuesday mornings and five minutes before the stream starts, a message is generated to try to entice potential viewers to show up and then that gets posted to X or Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, Mastodon, LinkedIn, and a few select channels on Discord. Then all I have to do manually is to open up Ecamm Live, which is the software I use to stream, and then press go. And that set of workflows is truly a game changer for me. Going forward, I may look at removing the webhook in this particular example and using image magic on N8N server instead, but I'll tackle that later on. And there you have it. You've now seen how to connect your remote N8N server to your local machine using Webhook. This opens up so many possibilities beyond just creating Obsidian notes. You could trigger local backup scripts, control home automation, update local databases, basically anything you can do with a shell script. The real power here is that we're combining the reliability and accessibility of a remote N8N server with the flexibility of local scripts and applications. And thanks to our tail scale setup from the previous video, 
the networking piece is already taken care of. I love working with these tools and they do an amazing job of making my life easier. One of the features that makes this possible is that I can call Olama on my local machine. So make sure you watch this video next that shows you how to do that. Until next time, happy automating. Bye.